Hi, my name's Frank Tanner, and you are lucky enough to be watching the AU Review. Yeah, can you tell us, tell us a bit about the record? Like, this is your sixth album now, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, how long have you got? Um, <laughs> the first thing is this this Australian tour was supposed to be the kind of the first tour after the record was out, and then the record isn't out yet, so that's bad. But the good news is it means we'll probably be back in Australia again before the end of the album cycle, so that people can know the new songs. But um, basically, uh, yeah, I mean, it's sixth album, and I think that um, a lot of... Both bands and audiences get a little bit kind of tired by six albums for acts. It's, there's nothing, it's not that kind of like, um, it's not in and of itself an exciting number for an album. And I think that with that in mind, I thought it was, I think it's important to, for me to kind of uh, sort of recast what I do slightly. Um, or at least, I mean, I guess it's kind of reboot with what they'd say in films, Redux, or whatever. But also, I mean, I just kind of, I wanted to make a record that felt and sounded like a debut album, you know? And when it, when bands make a debut album, it's kind of, you're full of piss and vinegar and you basically set up your gear in the studio and you knock out your live set and it's just, everything's exciting and fresh and fizzy. And I, and I wanted that vibe for this record. And so, um, we spent ages, uh, The Sleeping Souls and I, uh, rehearsing songs and playing them live and trying to treat it in that kind of debut album kind of way so that it had that kind of vibe. And um, it took, part of the delay with the record, it took quite a long time to convince record label people that that was a good idea because, um, bless them, but label people quite often want you to spend six months in the studio um, tinkering. And that's specifically what I didn't want to do. Um, and in the end, uh, the project was kind of brought together in a really awesome way by Butch Walker, who's, uh, who I didn't know was a producer. I knew him as a, as a songwriter and loved his stuff. And then um, it transpired that he's also a massive producer. I got in touch with him. It turns out he's a fan of my stuff. Um, and he just kind of, we just clicked about our kind of musical reference points. And also, I think he completely understood what it was I was trying to do with the record. And so um, after all that, we kind of, it, everything sort of, went very quickly and we cut the record live in nine, in nine days in Nashville and just like little things like we didn't use any click tracks we didn't really do much in the way of overdubbing um, the vocals I did the vocals afterwards but like pretty much I, I think with one exception every single song is one take from the top to the bottom of the song with no like editing or tuning or any of that kind of nonsense that bands get involved in and that I've got involved in, in the past and it's just it sounds like us playing live and that's what I wanted it sounds really an organic process like even yeah. for like a six album you think you, know, you have a down pat by the six album say but it sounds like it's like it's really organic and yeah i'm really excited by it actually yeah i i'm i i think that's the thing i think you know there's quite a lot of, it could it, this whole thing right now i could have been sitting here going yeah just did another bunch of songs in the studio and that's that's tedious and you need to avoid that but also i mean all throughout my career we particularly in the last sort of five years or so when the Sleeping Souls and I have become a really cohesive live unit, you know. And I like to think of them as my E Street band, if I can say that without being overly pretentious. Of course you can, But, course, but, but um, you know, and I, I feel like we have a real power as a live band that we've never quite captured on an album yet. And, and that was kind of one of the big kind of marks to hit for me in the studio was like, you know, it, I, want it, I want what we do live because I think we're a really fucking good live band. I want that on the album. And I think we've done that very successfully. And, uh, yeah, can, can you... Uh quickly talk about the, the singles that will come from yeah. the album as well well I mean sing the first thing to say is the single choice is not my um, <laughs> forte famously a long time ago when we were picking Million Dead's first single I was trying to choose some weird kind of odd time signature six minute long kind of wig out thing and, and then we had this two minute long kind of pop song and everyone was like what are you talking about so I generally don't get involved in picking the singles I treat all the songs equally and then other people tell me which ones are going to get played in the radio but having said that I mean um, the, the lyrical theme of the record generally is it's a record about kind of picking yourself up and dusting yourself down um, Tape Deck Heart was a really kind of quite downbeat record that was about failure and fucking up and, and kind of reaching a moment in your adult life when you realise that you've you've really screwed something up kind of thing a relationship being the most obvious part of it but um and, and in retrospect i feel that's a record i kind of needed to make um and it's quite it's been quite liberating writing songs about coming out the other side of that and that's kind of what the record's about it's about picking stuff up also i mean you know since tape deck heart came out or since we made it at any rate i've kind of i have experienced uh the full gamut of what it's like to be somebody who people of some public renown i suppose i want to say and some parts of that are really lovely you know people buy you drinks in bars and some parts of it can be really really shitty and there was definitely kind of a period of time where i kind of went through the ringer a little bit in the, in the public eye and i kind of i feel like I, I i acquitted myself well i came out with you know i, d I didn't back down or apologize or whatever and and it's that's also what the record's about it's about kind of like weathering the storm and going 
go fuck yourself. <laughs> you know, this is me. Yeah, yeah, this is me. And and if you don't like it, well, bummer. But well, I'll get over it. Um, you know. So um, so the first song we released from the the album is called Get Better, and um, it's kind of. Uh, it's sort of like an overture for the record, almost. You know, it's both stylistically and lyrically. You know, it's about it's about standing up again. Um, I, I accidentally nicked the song title off Scroobius Pip, who, but I, I contacted Scroob and said, "Sorry, you've got a song called Get Better, and I forgot, and I've written a song called Get Better." And to his enormous credit, he offered to do a remix of my one. Oh, wow. So, uh, so we're all square. Uh, for all the pedants out there who are about to point out that the song title has been borrowed. Anyway, well, um, when's that remix coming out? Yeah, well, I don't know. He hasn't done it yet. He's a very busy man, but. Um, uh, yeah, so that was uh, that's the first song we put out. First single proper is a song called uh, "The Next Storm," which is a tune about. Um, it's a similar thing. It's kind of an extended metaphor about the weather, um, and uh, I just I've got this image in my head of um, the last scene of The Wizard of Oz when they're back in Kansas and the tornado, the twister, has annihilated the town and they come out of the underground shelter and it's this weird mix of like, well on the one hand everything that we knew has been destroyed but on the other hand we're still here, you know, and, and actually that's more important than anything else is just being alive and being with your friends and your family and that kind of thing so um, yeah, it's about kind of, kind of trawling through the wreckage and, and standing up again.